Okay, here's a quick walkthrough of the entire tractor construction from bolts to the finished product. So we've got basically a front section on a tractor which carries the engine connected to the back platform here and we have this articulating joint as the center center of attraction. You steer by actually bending along this axis and the wheels are able to stay on the ground because there's a long shaft that you see going to the, fore, to the front of the tractor which rotates such that the back wheels actually stay on the ground at all times. So that's the, that's the steering and frame. Now the frame is largely bolt together design. You've got XYZ kind of bolt corners. It's really just a box with, with wheels right now. And upon that you've got the loader arms connected. Uh, the structural members here are all four by four by quarter inch tubing. And uh, there's actually a little cheat. If you notice, like for example, um, let's see, this corner right here. Uh, I welded that because uh, this is just for prototyping purposes, but when I did the bolt holes for the, here's an example of a bolt, all these bolt holes are torched simply by hand and they're, therefore they're larger than need to be so there's a little play in them so the frame would shift around if I actually didn't do a few of these welds and that was just for the prototyping purposes and in the future what I'll do is I'll drill the holes exactly and make proper measures so that there is no play and therefore you can just do bolts on the entire structure. So here let me show the wheels how they attach. You've got the wheel motors that are all powered by the hydraulic pump which is in the back of the engine. All the power of the entire device goes through the engine through the hydraulic fluid. So you've got these hoses going through a val your valve control system and going to all the power elements like the, the loader arms and the motors. So let's just look at the motors. The motors are essentially just two, two bearings attached to the hydraulic motor through a coupler and then the wheels are just a simple welded on kind of um, a plate that attaches to the wheel once again with bolts and there's a spacer here to to make the room for the coupler between the motor hydraulic motor the hydraulic motors are um, about 10 horsepower each and we've got four of them for four wheel drive now here's the other, some other details, say the hydraulics, so let's go through that circuit. So you start with the hydraulic pump driven by the engine, 55 horsepower diesel engine. You've got, this is the inlet suction pipe coming from the hydraulic reservoir. You're going into the pump and let me go to the other side. You've got this main hose going to the entire hydraulic circuit. So here's the inlet hose for the hydraulic circuit. This main valve here, that's actually the steering back and forth. The second valve is turning left and right. And these other ones here are for the loader. So actually this will be live now. You can see we can drop the thing down and also drop the bucket down with this other, other handle. Here you have the three channels of hydraulic takeoff which are used for any applications from the, the the CEB press, sawmill, power takeoff generator, the lathe that we're building right now, and everything else. That's some of the main d details. We've got the, the big weight in the back because of poor distribution. We put on 1,500 pounds of batteries on the back to keep the weight distribution proper because even with heavy loads, the, the back wheels come off the ground. Uh, what else is to be said? We've got, right now, it's everything is kind of in a makeshift position here. Here's the hydraulic cylinder that actually does the steering by pulling this in and out. You're rotating the back wheels to, to make the proper turning without skidding on the ground. Uh, here's the hydraulic level in the tank right there. And that's about all. Here you have a receiver. You can do things like pulling various implements like a plow or a disc or harrows or anything and you can the thing that's missing from this and pl which plugs into the hydraulic takes takeoffs here is the the power takeoff motor which you can apply to the power takeoff generator you can use you can mount the motor right on this receiver too to run run implements from behind like a say a pull behind combine or something or you can mount the 
the motor independently on devices such as the lathe or sawmill. Um, uh, as far as the wheels here, we've got extended shafts sticking out so you can do dually double wheel configuration for extra traction. You can put ch tire chains, which I have a simple design that cost you about $35 for tire chains. So these, these um, are just standard 16 inch truck tires that we used in this case. The engine mounting. The engine is mounted on these rubber feet that absorb shock and the point is that um, in the future versions the engine will be a modular engine cube that is totally swappable between this and MicroTrack, the small two-wheel walk-behind version. Now here you see a battery. Uh, we'll eliminate that as we eventually go to a steam engine as the power unit for this system. Here maybe a couple more details about how the wheels look here. It's all the same construction, just two bolt, two bearings, uh, the hydraulic motors, and that's on each wheel like the same kind of configuration. Two plates with bearings attached straight to the frame, and there you go. Now look at this joint detail here. There's a rotating shaft, goes all the way to the front of the tractor, which allows, which spins this joint allowing the back wheels to to rotate up and down so that they stay on the ground at all times. And this is just stiff reinforcement of it after the the middle joint cracked. It was totally reinforced to this much stronger configuration. And this actually welded here so that's cheating again. I had bolts initially but I welded that because that's that's the critical feature that you don't want to break here. And that's how it looks. Here's just some more details. We've got the tooth bar bucket here which interchanges readily with things like the the big loader bucket. But the important thing to note here is the quick attach plate, which is a plate on a front loader arms which has these fingers, these three sets of fingers, which can grab onto any implement. And by simply pulling out these two bolts here, one on each side, you can release implements readily. So you can attach this other bucket simply by going in here and grabbing that or this backhoe implement which you just grab here and then plug it into the hydraulic takeoffs. Now here's a, you see the yellow paint that's actually pinch points. It's places you gotta watch out for. You don't want to put your arms there when you're driving the tractor because you can pinch yourself, lose your fingers, including here where this, this bends together as well and here down by the cylinder. And just a little more detail on the hydraulics, you've got, here's actually a cushion valve for the wheels so that if there's a sudden bump or stop, the fluid bypasses and that's called a cushion valve uh, for the, the wheels. Also there's a, here I have a flow control valve which allows you to control the amount of fluid power that's behind, uh, that goes into the circuit behind it. So. If I want to have a lot of power in the hydraulic takeoffs, I open that up all the way or close it down. Say I have a little implement that doesn't need a lot of fluid, I don't. I can do that. Uh, furthermore, here is a cushion valve for the actual front end loader because if you say you have a heavy load on it and you drop it down really quickly, you can take a real sudden hit as you stop that motion because the fluid stops in place and there's a huge impulse at that point. So this allows a smooth dropping of of, uh, of the front end loader, otherwise it would be very jerky. Um, what else? 